Hey home bakers, it's Jack here, bakerjack.co.uk, bringing you your weekly bread making tip every single Thursday. And this week it's wholemeal flour part two. How to use it. Roll that theme tune. Hello to you and welcome back to the Bakery Jack YouTube channel where I share with you a little bit of my bread making expertise every single Thursday. If you're brand new here, where on earth have you been? You've got a lot of catching up to do and if you want to see me every single week, consider clicking subscribe before you go. Last week we spoke about what whole meal flour actually is. Whole wheat flour, whole grain, whatever you want to call it, I like to call it brown. If you didn't watch last week's video number 136, I advise you go and check it out so you're fully on board. Uh, before you watch this one, you know exactly what I'm talking about. For those of you wholemeal bread fans out there, those of you recipe tweakers wanting to make your loaf of bread healthier or heartier or heavier, uh, you may have already tried to swap out white flour for brown flour and realise it's not as simple as just a straight up swap. This week I'm going to talk about why it isn't the, that easy and the adjustments you may like to make in your method or your recipe to make it work for you and be able to substitute that white flour for brown flour. Last week we spoke about the fact that brown flour is just simply white flour with the bran uh, left in it, which is a very quick way of summing up last week's seven minute video in a nutshell. So with that piece of knowledge in mind, we can use our incredible minds to think about the next bit. We can think about what we are using, why the properties might be different and figure out exactly what we need to do to be able to substitute some or all of the white flour in a recipe for brown flour. The gluten in the flour is in the white bit of the wheat, even though technically that's not correct because the gluten doesn't happen until moisture is added, blah, blah, whatever. The point is, and the punchline, is that the white part of the wheat is the bit responsible for developing the gluten in the final dough. The brown part, the bran, is just bran. It's just the outside skin of the wheat kernel. It's the little jacket that the wheat grain wears. And so if the white flour is the white part of the wheat grain we discussed last week and the brown flour is the white bit and the bran, then it makes sense that in a 100% white flour bread dough there is more gluten present than in a 100% brown flour bread dough. Does that make sense? That means to us as home bakers that a wholemeal dough will have less elasticity, less strength, less bounce, less snapback, which means that the wholemeal dough will have a weaker structure. It's not able to hold as much gas as a white dough. The wholemeal dough will never puff up as big as a white dough. It will collapse at an earlier stage of the puff. And so therefore, if the final dough is less puffy, then the final bread will be heavier. It will be more dense and that's okay if that's to your taste. And so if you're swapping out white flour for brown flour, if you're doing the recipe, your simple yeasted loaf of bread recipe from video number 130 and you wanna make it healthier or heartier or more wholesome, then here are three things that might help you in your experimentation and stay to the end uh, for a summary. Let's imagine something for a second. If you've got a loaf of bread recipe, a white loaf of bread recipe that you're happy and comfortable with, and you completely swap out all the white flour for 100% wholemeal flour, you've dramatically changed the characteristics of the dough and the final bread from one extreme to another in one swoop. That's a huge leap to get your head around, and it might result in frustration and stickiness and heavy bread, in short, uh, sadness. In my class, it's certainly in the introduction, we make a variety of those were a variety of white to brown ratios and let me assure you that is no accident we do it deliberately so that we learn we do it to prove a point we make white rolls out of hundred percent white flour dough we then make a farmhouse loaf out of 20 percent brown flour 80 percent white flour and then we make a wholemeal walnut and raisin bread out of 50 50 50 percent white flour and 50 percent brown flour each time we up the ratio of brown flour our loaf is packing more of that wholemeal flavor and it also tends to get a little bit heavier 20% brown flour is great because you get a little bit of that flavour and character from the wholemeal brown flour, but the loaf retains the almost pretty close to original lightness. Even at 50-50, even at half brown and half white, uh, you get loads of wholemeal flavour and it still retains some sort of lightness. 
So don't swap out all of the white flour for all of the brown flour in the first place. Play with the ratios, try with 20% brown and see how the dough feels, see how you get on and see how you like the bread at the end. Try the final bread and next time change the ratio if you fancy, but if you do, there's something else we need to bear in mind. Brown flour requires more moisture, absorbs more water than white flour. So the more you up that brown ratio, the brown to the white, the more you're gonna likely wanna up the water content as well. So you don't result in a super heavy and dense bread at the end. It's not a lot, but it makes a difference. As an example, for a half a kilo of white flour, for 500 grams of white flour loaf of bread in that video 130, I use 320 grams of water. Now, if I was to introduce 20% brown, do 20% brown, 80% white, I'd maybe up the water content by 10 grams, bring it to 330. And for a 50-50 loaf, perhaps, let's work with about 350 grams. And that's what I do for the walnut and raisin wholemeal bread that I was talking about earlier in my courses. Now, these measurements are specific to the flour that I use. They're the guidelines that I use, and it might be different for your flour at home, but the principle remains the same. The more brown flour, the more water you'll need. It's not a lot, but it helps out. Use the amount in the beginning that you are comfortable with. Bake the bread, see how it turns out, and then adapt the water, up the water a little bit next time if you feel like you want to. The brown flour absorbs more water, but leading nicely into our third point, it also takes a little bit longer to do that. Brown flour sucks up more water, tightening up the dough, and so we adapt the ingredients, the water, to be able to accommodate for that. Brown flour also takes more time to be able to soak up all that water, and so it's a nice idea to change the method to accommodate for that. Mix up the dough and leave it alone for 20 to 30 minutes to be able to absorb all that moisture before you get straight into kneading it. It needs some time to suck up all that water, and it'll be a much more manageable dough if you just let it soak for a bit. Brown bread will always be heavier. Some things are made of brown flour because of that fact, like a ciabatta, for example. Ciabatta's characteristics are light and airy. It's got big, uneven holes inside, and it simply is that because it's made out of white flour. The process is what it is, and the product is what it is, and that's a reflection upon the gluten content in the white flour. You might put a tiny touch of brown flour in there to bring a little bit more flavor, a little bit more texture, and you'd get away with it, but you'd never make the same bread with 100% wholemeal flour, because the characteristics of the dough itself and the desired characteristics of the final bread don't match up. The final bread would not have the open and soft structure inside that we characteristically link to that of a ciabatta. But then again, that depends on what you like to make and what you like to eat. And that's the beauty of the game that we all play. When you understand the concepts and the principles and you practice, you may well decide that whatever bread that you created out of nothing, whatever name you want to give to a bread that you made applying ciabatta principles to a brown flour dough, that nameless, never before seen creation of entirely your doing might just be the best bread you've ever tasted. Principles are your freedom, and what comes next is up to you. Listen, thank you so much for being here this week and every single Thursday that has passed. I present my videos to you in the way that I do because it's the only way that I know how, and I hope that it might make you feel like you might just want to have a play. I hope that a little bit of understanding gives you uh, the confidence and makes you feel comfortable uh, to just try, to just do something. Because as painful as it might seem to go ahead and do something by yourself without a hand to hold, that's where you really learn. That's where your true triumph uh, awaits you. Good luck with it. I know my approach isn't for everyone, but good luck on your way. And I'll see you back here next week. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you so much for stopping by for your weekly bread making tip and don't forget if you don't want to miss any of my content you can sign up for the free home bakers bulletin and get all my content in your inbox every single thursday morning the link is underneath see you next week